In the last video, we talked about the right supply of money and what happens in two extreme situations if the money supply is effectively unlimited and if the money supply is extremely limited. So you might be wondering that is it always true that when the money supply increases that that results in the increased prices of all goods and services in that economy? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. So we'll look into that in a little bit more detail in this video. So let's look at a simple example. Let's assume that there's a village uh, whose population is 100 people. And let's assume that the currency in this village is gold coins. So people use gold coins to buy and sell things that they need. And we're going to assume that the amount of gold coins that are in circulation are equal to 1,000 gold coins. And so we're going to call this the money supply. And we're also going to assume that people in this village like eating bread. And every month, uh, this village produces about 100 units of bread. And the price of this bread is going to be price of the bread is going to be one unit of bread is equal to one gold coin. Now let's imagine that suddenly the leader of this village finds a huge supply of gold from somewhere outside the village. And he takes that huge supply of gold and he turns it into gold coins. And after he's done with that, he has an extra 1,000 gold coins. So he decides that he thinks it'd be a good idea if everyone who already has one gold coin in the village, he gives them another gold coin. So if you had two gold coins, the leader of the village will give you another two. And so what he's effectively done is he has increased the money supply by doing this. And the money supply, the new money supply, will be equal to the old money supply, which is 1,000 gold coins, plus the new money, the new money that was uh, created, which is another 1,000 gold coins. So the new money supply is now 2,000 gold coins. And so you might ask yourself, well, what will happen to the price of bread? There's now twice as much money in circulation, and there, you know, there really is just the same amount of bread. And so what you would imagine was probably likely to happen is that since there's more gold coins chasing the same quantity of bread, you might expect the price of bread to go up. So it's reasonable to say that the price of bread will go up. It'll be greater than what it was before, which was one gold coin. It's probably likely going to be somewhat close to two gold coins since the money supply doubled and there hasn't been any increase in the amount of bread that's produced. So anyway, in this situation, we can see how an increased money supply causes increased prices in the goods and services that people consume, in this case, bread. So now let's imagine that the leader of the village decides to spend or allocate his extra thousand gold coins in a different way. And so instead of just handing it out to people who have existing gold coins, he decides to basically invest in building a new bread factory. And we're going to assume that the cost of building this new bread factory and hiring people is going to be a thousand gold coins. And because of that, the money supply will increase the same way it did before. There's going to be a thousand gold coins that were originally, originally in circulation, and he just spent another thousand gold coins building the factory, plus hiring workers. And so the money supply, as previously, is 2,000 gold coins. But assuming that this factory is actually able to produce bread, that would imply that the amount of bread in the village will go up. And so let's say that this new factory is able to create another 100 units of bread a month. And so that means that in the village, there's now going to be 200 units of bread. The next question is, well, what happens to the price of bread? And it's reasonable to say that the price of bread is certainly probably not going to be equal to two gold coins a unit 
it'll probably be, be something closer to one gold coin a unit because even though the money supply increased, there's been a corresponding increase in the supply of bread. In fact, you could really argue that the second scenario where there's 2,000 gold coins in circulation but 200 units of bread is really a great scenario because the price of bread has stayed relatively the same as it was originally, but there's now suddenly twice as much bread to go around for the same village. And so the village has become more wealthy and has figured out a way to increase the output of its goods and services. The important point here is that an increased money supply with no corresponding increase in output is what causes the currency or the value of the currency to go down. And if that happens year after year, that process is typically called inflation. A very famous example of inflation being caused by increased money supply happened in Europe from about the early 1500s to the 1600s. So let's take a look at a few charts. During the 1500s, the commonly used currency in Europe was made out of silver. And over this time, there was a large increase in the supply of silver in Europe. Now the reason for this was twofold. The first was that there was a large mining boom in southern Germany in the first half of the 1500s. And during the second half of the 1500s, the Spanish discovered silver mines in New America and imported a lot of that silver to Europe. So in this chart you see in front of you, on, the, on this axis over here is amount of silver, and on the horizontal axis is time, ranging from 1500 to 1610. And you can see the amount of silver that was mined from Germany in the pink line over here. And the green line shows the amount of silver that was imported from the New Americas by the Spanish. And so you can see a very large increase in the supply of silver from about 1550 to about 1580. Now the Spanish economy at this time was exporting raw materials to most of Europe and was importing finished manufactured goods back from Europe. They also had a very large balance of payments deficit in the sense that they were importing much more than they were exporting. So when the Spanish got a hold of the new gold in the, from the New World and brought it back to Europe, they used it for two purposes. The first was to basically be able to pay off their deficit, so to be able to keep importing more than they were exporting. And the second was to basically fund their conquests around Europe. The point is, it doesn't seem like much of the money that they imported actually went to developing productive enterprises in Spain. And so it's not particularly surprising that if you look at the price index in Spain across this time, which I'm just going to add to this graph, it's the yellow line that you see over here. You can see the price index increasing about threefold from about a hundred over here to about three hundred by the end of the century. And because the Spanish were sending a lot of this new silver that they had imported from new, the New Americas to the rest of Europe, you saw inflation in the rest of Europe as well. Here for instance I've added the price index in England and you can also see an increasing price level across that entire century. 